Welcome back to Dragonborn Industries, where we're going to carry on with our Resident Evil Steam Forge game painting. And tonight, you guys decided on it. I'm working on Jill. You can see down in the bottom left corner, but also just here, the mini. Let's see if we can get that to focus, and we will get into where we are. So obviously when we base layered these up the other week, uh, I primed them black and then I just did those trousers in Necromancer Cloak, which is a very dark grayish black. So I'm just gonna leave those where they are and then we'll go through and do all of those blues, get the skins done. And that will be Jill all but done. So Jill's flesh tone is just like we have on Chris. It's quite rosy. So we are going to go straight to putting some brown on the skin as our base. Hope everyone's doing well. We've already painted up Chris and Barry, so if you haven't seen those and you want to, go check them out on our YouTube, which is youtube.com forward slash Dragonborn Industries, as it always is. And in the meantime, I'm going to grab a palette, I'm going to grab some of my tissue, seal, and we're just going to crack on. Very now to do, but do it. So, let's not beat around the bush, shall we? Grab those ones there. I do, however, need a palette. And I think I've left them all on the table. So I'm just gonna grab one of those. Hey, Chris, how you doing? I hope you're all good, buddy. We're getting ready to paint Jill up. I need a palette, and I think I've left one. Oh, it's over there. I hope you've had a good weekend, along with everybody else. And yeah, we've got Barry and Jill, uh, Barry and Chris done, so time to do Jill. I'm going to start with the skin. We've already got that necromancer cloak on the legs from where we did the. Whoop! So we get that focus again because now it's not doing it. From where we did those base layers before, just primer and base layer on that for the trousers. Thank you very much. Um, yeah, so with obviously the stream coming up for the camera angles, uh, we had to, hey, Miss Lounge, um, change some things around. Uh, Miss Lounge helped us out in chat with a few other people. And yeah, hopefully with a compressor on and me getting some new boom arms for the mics to bring them down a little bit, we should be able to sort the sound, sort out some overlays. And yeah, we're, we're trying to keep the cameras to not moving around as much as possible because the more I have to fuck around for every live game stream, the more it's gonna be tedious. Hey, Dragon School, you've missed nothing. All I've done is just say that we are, we did the base layers on Jill a little while ago and we've just got those trousers done up to the Necromancer Cloak and that was it. When it's gonna focus and we were talking about new camera angles which we were sorting out the other night, come on. It really doesn't like it, though. So the problem difference is, because we're using one of the other webcams, it's actually really hard to uh, get it to automatically focus. Let's do that, and then come back and straight in. There you go, uh, Dragon School. So all we've got on there at the moment is that necromantic gray from the army painter on the trousers. So I'm gonna go in, do some of my oak brown for the base layer of skin. Now it's not focusing out, of course it's not. And yeah, we're testing out some new camera angles because I'm trying to keep the cameras in one position the best I can. Ready for when we do start those streams on the 20th of November for Starfinder and hopefully other campaigns from there. We can then begin to only have to move one of them. This is the issue though. The PTZ, which is up there, which isn't the one looking at me, is very much a easy autofocus, whereas this one, lurking, no worries, Dragon Skull, I hope you're all good. It's interesting that it's not focusing. You need the Ozbot meat. Yeah, so I've got the Ozbot uh, 4K one, that's my PTZ, but because I've now put the PTZ over there, so I've got my face cam there, which is a Logitech Brio, 
which is an autofocus camera. There we go. Um, the Osbot is right underneath it, and that is, I'll show you guys, I'll go into it now anyway. Um, it's actually this camera here. So, realistically, I can then come in and out with the PTZ, but I've only got the one PTZ, one Osbot. Um, yeah, so the Logitech Brio was the best one for field of uh, view because of the players being so far away from the cameras because they are like next to me and the players are about six foot over there because the table's quite big. Uh, but I do want to get... Um, <laughs> I had to drop me down to 360 because of my awful internet, so I can't see the difference. Yeah, fair enough. But yeah, so I mean, that's just me trying to get the focus just right on um, on these, which is now decided to do. Like, the, the Brios are great, and I'm used to using them, and they get better up close than the Ozbots do. I can get right up there, and with those ones, I should be able to show you eyes when I get to them. However, when they decide that they're going to unfocus and stay unfocused, it is a pain in the ass. So hopefully we're not fighting that too much and we can cut most of this off from there. But how is everyone doing? Now that we're all kind of jumping in on chat, it's great to see everyone. I hope you've all had a good weekend. I had a banging weekend. I had uh, some of the Starfinder guys over. We talked about a few different things. And then we just had a night of playing board games and parlor games and stuff. And it was just really awesome. So I had, I had a great time. It was nice to kind of socialize again because I don't do that very often. Uh, yeah, you guys been up to much? You guys been up to anything exciting? Meet just the group mode as well. Ooh, okay. I will have to have a look into those. How much were, were they for you in Canada? Because I know that the Ozbot for me was... It's not the most expensive, but it's certainly not pocket money change. Right. So, I'm going to grab my... Brown. Jill's got... There's a brunette, so that also helps being able to layer up everything at the start here with this monster brown. I've thinned it down a little bit. We're going to go around and just grab all of the hair, all of the skin tones, because obviously she's wearing short sleeves, a lot like Barry and Chris. And that face is very exposed as well. We'll be working with blues and greys for the rest of the uh, colours, because that's what Jill is wearing. Shouldn't actually be too hard of a paint job, Jill. It's good, your studio's nice and big as you could be needing a film crew like Crit Roll soon. That would be amazing. If we can get to the point where we've got actual like cameras, I would be amazed. But that's a pipe dream. That's way down. I just wanna start the stream. Have some fun with friends. And if you guys want to take part and enjoy that too, then that's awesome. The only goal so far. I'm going to take it one step at a time. Because if I don't, <laughs> I have no clue what I'll be doing. How are the music levels for you guys? Can you hear it all right? Is it a bit quiet, a bit loud? Jill is wearing these very very short sleeves and dark gloves so we're going to have a nice dynamic for light and dark i will be there soon <laughs> you're always welcome miss lounge uh still good to have a drink yeah it is absolutely i mean that's kind of where this all started for me was the dream really what else can i do with my life that i want to do rather than just being ha being forced to do and this is it so we're going for it! Right, so... I am trying to pull as much of the pigment up from the bottom of the arms to the top where I can, just because I like to have that really strong pigment at the top because that is where the light hits. So we do attempt to do that. But 
I'm just going to go straight over those fingers. Not being the tidiest at the moment, but that's because I want that brown in between those fingertips. And then I'll paint the gloves back on with some black and some grey afterwards. Right. Her boots are, boots are black. The webbing straps are black. The belt is black. The gloves are black. Yeah, then we've just got a grey blue shirt. Slightly darker blue on the pauldrons. She's wearing the least amount of armour. And that same blue is on the beret. So, let's double check we haven't missed anywhere on the face and neck. As we want that to dry off, because again, we're going to be doing the eyes early doors. Hope you all have had a really good Monday, and it's not been too stressful at work. And if it has, hey, unwind. Do something tonight. Have a beer. Paint a mini. I did get to play a new board game yesterday, which was quite cool. I got to play A Call to Adventure. That was really fun. And what I do like is a lot of games these days are having solo modes included. I think Resident Evil is one of those games. But A Call to Adventure also had like a solo mode. And it's a deck building game. And it's just really good fun. So, let's grab... So I need to match that greyish blue shirt. I think... Right, we're going to mix up orc grey, or we are going to do Fenrisian grey, maybe? I think that could be pretty close. It's like this bluish grey from Citadel. Fenrisian. I think that could do it. Certainly as our base layer, at least. on the screen. Coming down there as well. Whoop. There we go. Now I can see chat. Right, let's crack on then, shall we? I don't think it'll take me too long to do Jill, if I'm being perfectly honest. Took a little bit of time to do Barry. We sped it up for Chris, and now, actually, I think we're in the stride of it. I just need a brush that I can unload some paint with. So I don't want to paint from the pot. I do want to thin this down. There we go. With that, I just take a dollop. Put it in there. I'm going to wash off the brush. I'm going to add a little bit of water to that just to thin it down. Again, we want consistency of milk. And then... The old dental goggles go back on. Oh right, here we go. Gonna load up the brush. And again, there's not much on that brush. I don't need much. I can just come back in and out and do it as we need to. So let's grab. There are some tricky bits on the front. So we're gonna grab those. And that's going up, because they're armed together with the beretta out the front. The clavicle on the top of the breast is really closed off and that's going to have a lot of impact on how the brush can move. So I'm going in there first so that if there's any tidy up that needs doing I can do it afterwards. Ideally, I think I will do the straps in that same necromancer cloak as the trousers, because I think that is part of Jill's aesthetic. Oh no, they are different. No, no, we'll keep them dark. We'll keep them a little bit darker. That way they pop off the trousers, actually, because she's got that loose, hol loose holster belt going on. And then we will go from there. Right. And again, we're just loading up as much as we can, pulling that pigment to the top, 
but this one most likely will need a second layer. It's quite a light colour, which means it's going to be quite thin on our mini. That's okay. Here as well, on the arm, where it stretches across the outside of that body, we've got a lot of exposed area. I will paint a black line between the arm and the side so we can differentiate between the two limbs. And usually I would only do that black line between different garments or different areas of the mini, but because that's such a wide open space with a lot of shoulder and arm on show, then a lot of side on show, I really want to separate the two and it will bring focus to the one further out, which is the arm. I'll probably do the same on the other side. be the majority of that base layer on but like I said I will have to layer this up it is a very thin gray need to make sure I get inside the arms make sure we're getting all of those sleeves and then we'll get those pauldrons with a deep blue of some kind little bit on the face there. I'm just going to wash that off. Uh, Geeky, I'm opening my new Kickstarter board game Roll for the Great Old Ones. A once for player roll and write game in a Lovecraft world. Damn! That sounds amazing. You'll have to post the pictures, buddy. Very much want to see what you pull out of there. We're trying to get under the armpit. Those arms in that position, although very cool, very hard to get into. There's actually a section of the underarm as well that I've missed with the brown, so I'm going to go in and do that as well. as I'm driving home from work shortly. No worries, Kinaru. You just uh, take it easy, take it safe. So here's our messy base layers. We've got that Fenrisian grey. Whoop. Yeah, I'm on. Really doesn't like me tonight. There we go. I should be able to get in real close. There we go. So you can see that that layer is really thin. And that was only watered down to about milk. But it should, realistically, dry quite nicely. We'll be able to go over it again in a minute and then we can tidy up those straps and we can begin, begin to put the separation on. Highlights up. Come on, focus up again. Maybe it's something I got so close to it. Let's bring it back gradually. Hey, that seems to work. Let's do that from now on. So I'm going to grab our dark blue I'm going to be using Cantor blue from Citadel because I'm out of deep blue from the army painter so this is what we be doing right I'm going to put a little bit of that in there doesn't need all that much I'm going to take some of that water and just water it down again and not that much then anyway. let's create just a nice thin coat Grab our artificer brush. Make sure we've got a nice fine point on there. And again, not loaded up that much, just a little bit. And then we're gonna wipe some on our fingers, because that's what I just did. We'll try that again. There we go. 
So let's grab the top of the bed, eh? And again, we want to pull any pigment that we want stronger to that area. So the top of the berry is definitely where we want that pigment. Nice band line around it as well. badge at the front but it doesn't matter if I paint over that at the moment because we will be going back over that later and painting this then we shouldn't lose any of that detail. The same with those pauldrons we're going to pull up from the base to the top of the shoulder same that we did for Chris and Barry on their tactical vests. I'm going to try not to get it on the hair in the face but it's me so I probably will in a second. Hey Fluff, no worries, never any worries. Welcome. We're just getting some more base layers on. Just cracking on with some Jill Valentine. A lot of people are lurking because they're on their way home from work. It's also absolutely fine. I obviously pick those times for our stateside and Canadian friends that are finishing their day. I'm just trying to pull that blue up. <laughs> Dragon skill. Right. So for that, obviously it's quite a pop in blue. Whoop. But that's what we want. It looks like those blues are a lot darker in, or more prominent in the photo that we have. So that's what we're going to go with from there. So clean off the brush. I'm going to let those ones dry for a little bit. In the meantime, we can probably go in and do our trouser highlights, to be honest. We do still have, though. Hers are a bit more blue than Barry's and Chris's were. So I wonder if, using the Cantor blue, I can highlight up with that and then maybe... Do a couple of tips of highlights with the orc grey and we get like a subtle difference in tone maybe. So not a lot of striation on the front. A fair amount on the back. Nice line down the side of the leg there. They've hidden in a mold line. Hidden with a mold line even. Or hidden a mold line in. Whichever way around it is. It works. Now butt cheek. Back of that thigh. A couple of decent areas on here actually that are quite wide and are in need of some of that blue. You definitely see some straps that I need to pull out with some black afterwards, but that, again, that is fine. The back of this leg is very, very open to light. Oh, have I missed something? <laughs> okay, so I was late, he wouldn't start over. He's just playing rude. It's his show, Ellipsis. Uh, how is everyone tonight? Yeah, oh, look at, look at chat, just having a nice old time. we just sit back and watch you guys be nice to each other. Like that. Okay, so 
it's almost like we're using the Cantor Blue as a shade. So although it's very thin, I'm only applying it to those heavier areas. And what we'll get is hopefully some depth to those trousers. Come in real close. You just see it, it almost looks like it's the light shining, but with that Cantor blue on there. We'll just tie it back into those pauldrons and the hat. And I think that might be a bit better. Just because, again, we've just got the right accessories and the right bits for the job. Then four of the pauldrons are gonna come back in a bit stronger. because those two bits really do stand out on the mini and in the picture. Same again on the other one. Just the, trying to get right into those recessed areas. Tidy up any spillover. There is a bit on the inside of the arm just there. I don't know if I've got the precision to get it. We'll try. Then, we're gonna come back over the berry, smoothing that out a bit, pull it to the top again, just to make the color at the top of the peak of the berry, where it's folded over, just a bit more vibrant, get some more saturation, hopefully. that shoulder I think I want the light to come in from that side so I very much want those colors to be bold over there then I'm gonna come back in to our Fenrisian gray and mix that up a little bit in there clean up that brush and then let's put a second layer onto that t-shirt shall we Try and make sure that we've got everywhere done on that one. So again, it's a very bright colour. It's the only mini where we've got a full shirt on show. We may as well show it off where we can. Again, just paying attention to anywhere that I want the light to be hitting better to pull that pigment towards that area. just make highlighting a lot easier later on. I actually think I can put a bit more blue on the back as well, across the back of the pauldrons. And that could work out quite well. So let's grab this one here. Right. Just a little bit more of that blue before it runs out. Now we're going to grab a little bit more. Oh, Miss Lounge, awesome. I am um, most of the way through episode two, actually, between being in and out of it today, trying to get stuff done and listen at the same time. Yeah, it's going well. Hopefully won't be too long before I'm asking when the next episode's coming out. Okay, so. Just still base layering up. So 
So let's repaint those gloves. And Jill's gloves are black, so I'm gonna go straight back in with my Chaos Black, which is like a matted one from the Army Painter. Quiet, and I find it, it's right there. Same again, pick the water down ever so slightly. I don't need to do too much, just enough that I can push that paint around, but not thick enough that it's gonna leave a horrible layer everywhere. Probably not quite as thin as milk. What I'm trying to get into is anywhere that I've gone over with the brown on those gloves or on the gun. I'm fluffy just chilling out it's good so don't need to tidy up the boots i do need to sort out some of those straps going around the legs and the holsters where i have just painted over them with the base layers i am going to paint those straps in black because i really want them to stand out against the rest of the garments that jill is wearing Quite a few on there. She's not wearing knee pads, but there is one on the inside of that thigh there that's part of the same strap that I've missed. Let's grab that. Then don't need to go onto the boots. Don't need to grab anything there. So we can now work on her armor straps anything that's really pronounced I can actually use the side of the brush to come up and down with which makes things a lot easier certain areas I do have to use the tip badge now. We keep forgetting about it when we get to the end. Oh, awesome. I will um, have a proper look at that in a bit, um, Geeky. I look forward to uh, delving into those pictures. So, that one there. Any more straps? Yep, there's one coming up this side here that we need to sort out. There on the outside. I may have overpainted one of the areas. Wonder why it looked a bit blocky. So. That's better. Let's tidy that up before we move on. It was around there. Okay. So I'm just gonna get back into that clavicle. Just make sure we've got all of that t-shirt as well. Really appreciate the watch and feedback as we progress through season two. Yeah, no worries. Um, 
I think the only thing I noticed in episode two was that every now and again you guys face away from the mics and your podcast mics seem to be very, very focused directionally. So I don't know how similar mine is. Like when I turn this way, I don't know if you guys can hear me because of the shotgun mics or not, but the... Um... Yeah, as soon as you step slightly out of yours, it seems to like dip out quite a bit. But not enough that I miss anything, but ever so slightly. But I, you might have already picked that up. So I think you even said at one point, speak into the mics to somebody. Yeah. So I assume as I go on, I'll find this. So, oh, wow. Watching Twitch while uploading to Little Pics to Discord nearly melted my internet connection. If only I worked for an internet service provider. If only. Yeah. If only. That is a good point, though, actually, when it comes to sound, talking to you guys here. Obviously, facing this way, my microphone is like here. It's, it, it's in, in my path. If I turn this way, do I really dip down or is it still all right? Because I put a compressor on, which should hopefully bring things up and down at the same time. So I don't know if it makes a difference or not, but yeah, let me know. Okay. What else has Jill got on that I need to sort out? So I'm gonna re-grab some more of that. You can hear the two mics combining and mixing as one. Cool. I like that. Let's grab that bit there. Once more, I'm coming back into the top of those pauldrons and I'm putting an even stronger amount of Cantor blue. So we're still working with the same blue onto the top. And again, that top ridge there. Just really strengthening that pigment. Only very minimal change for me, awesome. Yeah, I know that when we did the test the other night with a couple of the guys here in chat, James who is sat over there and Emily over there, the microphones are above and facing down towards that side of the table. And obviously it's always gonna pick up the central person the best, but uh, they, they've got quite a quiet voice. So I'm gonna bring the microphones down and then angle them basically at 90 degrees towards the players. They're as close as without it being in line of sight so that Hopefully, it picks up kind of like mine does for me when I'm facing this way. Because when I'm talking to them, I'm going to be talking that way. And chatting to you guys here is lovely. But when we tell a story, I want it to be very much a case that you can hear all of their backstories. You can hear them talking. You can hear them interacting because it's so important. And yeah, that, that's the dream. That's the hope that as long as the audio is good, everything else will follow. So while I'm waiting for those to dry, we're gonna make the eyes and do those first. Because it's easier to tidy up around the eyes than it is to put the eyes in and then re-tidy up. Uh, Miss Lounge, 20% makes a huge difference, yeah. Uh, hopefully we can rip it out to podcast. We can then do you know so many different things with that audio. We can cut it down, we can make sound bites, we can take the mick out of each other. And that's sort of the whole point really. So, let's grab, where is my Vallejo white? It's my favorite white and it's ever so runny. Problem is, I've got a lot of paint in here. When I'm busy, I tend to bury everything. There it is, it was right there. Ha <laughs> How are you dealing with giving knowledge to one person only or whispering? Yes. So, um, there will be a mix of uh, different things where it's a case of, uh, I will go and whisper to somebody there in the moment because I can get around everywhere. There's no cables that are gonna tie, hold me in at the moment. Then also a lot of, uh, if it's gonna be like a prolonged period of time or a one-on-one, -on -one, I'll just get everybody else to leave the room. I know that they'll go back and they'll be able to watch the show and that's fine. I trust these guys to not heavily meta it because they're good, good tabletop players. You know, nobody's out to, to get each other and nobody's out to do anything like that. So I will completely say, hey, can everybody leave the room except X, Y, and Z? Otherwise it'll be a, a small whisper for like insight or sense motive checks. 
And yeah, we'll just work it from there, really. Unless it's, um, I know that some people will have, well, you can have in Starfinder tele uh, telepathic abilities to overhear what's going on. So I could also just be like, yeah, roll me a perception check. You all hear it. So it's, uh, I guess it's situational dependent, really. Okay, so we're taking a very fine artist brush, and I'm going to go into those eyes now, because Jill's got very squinted eyes as well as Chris. Right, actually, that one's frayed at the edge. I'm probably not going to use that brush. So, I'm going to try and get this as pointed as possible and show you guys why I'm not going to use it. So the, I wonder if the tip will show. And ever so slightly bent over at the edge there, but it's also frayed. And yeah, it's um, not going to work that one. Uh, will chat be able to find out what was whispered or will that be a later thing with some tech? So if it's a story based thing, I will get people to leave the room and I will have a one on one conversation with that um that player that chat will be able to hear that way you're not just there going they're just whispering to each other this is a shit show however with um the only time i will probably whisper is when somebody's like insight check or sense motive and i have to go and be like they're telling the truth or you get this so it's only going to be a couple of seconds and chances are that player is going to afterwards tell the other players or during that conversation be like you're lying and you know that that's what that's going to be uh, as for the one-on-ones, yeah, that will be completely live and everybody will be able to hear, see, and take part. Then with... Ooh, yeah, I don't think there's going to be much that's going to be hidden from chat, to be honest. I, I, I want to keep you guys as immersed as possible and with the players and with me so yeah that's that's the hope with that made a mistake so I'm going into that eye again and I'm just trying to tidy up and pull out a lot of that ink that I put on to the left eye it was a bit too much hello Absalom welcome to the show we're painting up Jill Valentine she was picked next on Instagram and we're still just getting some base layers in and we're doing the eyes at the moment before we move on to the rest of the skin tones how are you doing Cool, it's interesting seeing it from a DM view with all the new digital systems as opposed to a player in the early 90s. So glad I got back into the hobby. Hey, nice. Um, yeah, it's kind of the other reason as well that I want to do it around the table is that kind of... I love it. I, I love playing online games and I love playing... You know, for some people, they, they have to. That's their only option. But I have the option to have people here at a table. I have the option to do it. And I, that's the kind of show I want to bring to people, so, yeah. Hopefully, we will bring something you can all feel and enjoy. The only thing that I would say is that during um, the show, as much as I love interacting with you guys, I will probably not be interacting with chat because I want to focus on the players at that point. We've got these awesome moderators who have just been dropped into a moderator chat, uh, apart from Dragon Skull, who actually, um, we have sent you a link so that you can jump in and then I will uh, privately put you into the actual moderator's chat room itself. And then we're gonna open up an actual Discord for Dragonborn Industries outside of that. And yeah, we'll uh, expand the community as much as we can. Yeah, it's going to be mad. How are you doing, Absalom? Sorry, it was uh, mid-conversation there. I hope you're keeping well. I hope you've had a good weekend.
So right now I'm just tidying up the shape of Jill's eyes. So I can then go in and add those pupils. Woo, spreadsheets. <laughs> oh yeah. The guys will also be using, hopefully, Hephaestos, which is a Starfinder website that's like D&D Beyond. It's free, and it's very, very good. However, I jumped onto mine earlier, and a lot of the uh, stuff was missing, and I was like, now hold on. <laughs> Where have you gone? This is not good, but I think it was a... Um, I think they've just done a bug fix and maybe it's just a bit too busy at the moment. So I'm going to check it again later and hope for the best. I've asked on their Reddit Discord and stuff and been like, hey, I'm missing stuff. But um, yeah, we'll see. So, base size, <laughs> Dragon School. Somebody say spreadsheets. Yeah, uh, Fluffy loves some spreadsheets. I know that you do. Come on, focus up for Jill's eyes. Let's bring it in slow. You know what? I, I'm not a big fan. Come on. I know you can see these tiny little white dots, but they're actually really well shaped, and I'd like to show them off. Well, I'm missing out. So that's a little better. So I'm just going to bring the her right one out a little bit more, or bring the left one in a little bit underneath some hair. But... That's the basis for the eyes that we're going to be doing. And then it's just a case of building them up, getting the pupils in there. Yeah, so I could afford to take that left one out a little bit further and shape it a little bit more. Thank you very much, Geeky. <laughs> but I promise you, Craig, I am not missing out on any spreadsheets. Yeah, so there will still be an element of um, tech involved. Because let's face it, some players have really, really tidy character sheets. Super tidy, amazingly clean. They can have a character sheet that lasts for three years when it's on paper. Other players, this guy, does one hit point change or stamina point change, rubs them out and rips the sheet. So, yeah. And there's a lot more new rules and the guys are pretty used to D&D Beyond by now, so it's nice to have the option of something different. But hopefully it doesn't do what it did to me tonight just before a stream or else we're all fucked. But I know that Demiplane is also coming out, but I don't know how much that's going to cost. And I don't know how keen I am just yet without having tried it. So I can come in now and tidy up some of the areas on that shirt. Make sure we've got some nice bold colors on those higher areas. Got some pretty hefty mold lines on this one, actually, I will say. I'm not sure if I could pass that off as a uh, bit of leather or something, but that's quite a difference just there. It's just on the uh, on the shoulder, but by the stars emblem, or stars badge. Quite a hefty mold line. Almost looks like one of those uh, folded up shirts that people have. Tidy, aren't they supposed to be tea stands? Uh, tea stain ripped and doodled on within the first 10 minutes. Hell yeah, hell yeah, they absolutely are. Uh, I don't know, I got a good one going for my paints. Nice. Yeah, it's, um, yeah, very much, um, mine, mine's a mess. My character sheets are awful, so very happy to have them electronically. 
I'm not quite on spreadsheets, but I know that a family member of ours does them on spreadsheets, and he loves them. So, I'm just hunting around anything that I may have missed on the base layers. Otherwise, I will go in and I will do those pupils. So, we'll find our black. And I'm not doing this with my thinnest brush. I'm doing this with my artificer layer. I'm going to come in and grab a bit of black and I'm going to pull it back off the brush, which should hopefully bring a small amount of heavy pigment to the tip. And then I'm going to come in at the top of the eyes. And I'm going to put the eye, the pupils towards the top of the eyeball. Hopefully leaving a gap of white at the bottom of the eye. People can be quite big. Thanks all, time to head out. I'll see you on the other side. Safe trip, buddy. Have a good journey home. Hey, I might even still be on when you get back. So they're not the tidiest I can do them. I'm probably going to come in again and I'm actually going to thicken them out a little bit. I'm going to make them quite big pupils. There is a reason for that. It means that tidying them up should be a lot easier. So they're a mess at the moment, but what you end up with is my light will add anything to that. No. Come on. There we go. So there's still a bit of a mess at the moment. But I can now come in with a finer white brush and tidy up the direction, get that line back underneath the right, uh, white, uh, right eye of white so that we have a lovely top pupil, which is the direction looking down the iron sight of the Beretta. And it should give us the same direction. We've managed to get those in the right place for that. So let's grab our artist brush again. The small amounts of paint like this don't take long to dry. So let's grab that one over here. Here we go, right. And because this was an airbrush white, it's still very, very thin. I'm gonna pull a lot of that off with our wet bit of tissue down there. tidying up around the eyes and that'll be them done really a little bit too much on the brush there it's going to take some of that back off before I touch it to the mini. Now 
and it's nice with these goggles I can see that on the brush before I even get to the mini which allows me to fix a mistake before it even happens We also want to make sure that we also get underneath the brow of the eye where we've done that pupil it is going to come up onto that area of the mini we want to tidy that up so that it's not just like a pupil and then when you look from underneath they're still on the underside of the eye there should be difference between them so, that's that bit there. Uh, Miss Lounge, driving time. Check back in if I can. No worries to Miss Lounge. Safe drive. I'm sure we'll be still here. Unless you're driving for hours. We'll grab some more of our Fenrisian grey. It's just there. Where we tidied up on the chest. We can still do with a bit of thickening up. Because that's dried. So I'm just double checking around for those straps again. Looking for anywhere that is particularly messy. Before we move on. But I think we're okay. So we tidy up that little bit at the back there. Just beneath the armor. Just make sure it doesn't look like we spilt a bit. We will go from there. So this is where we're at so far. Eyes are done. We can probably move on to the first set of skin tones. And then build up some other places that we need things to build up. So let's take this one off for now. We're just our eyes. And then we will. Nice! Cheers, Fluffy. Lovely little drink. Oh. Right. So. We've got that rosy skin again, so we're going to go back in with Army Painter Tanned Flesh to begin with. I don't need much to begin, just enough. Let's thin it down. Oh, it's quite a bit of thinning, actually. That's a thick paint. So three or four blobs of water. Water! Bowl of water! Let's grab these so I can see. So, I'm going to take our tone. So, Jill has got really quite narrow arms but also there's not a lot of muscle definition so this is going to be relatively easy to have her painted up the fingers and the face will probably be the hardest And again, we want to make sure we're pulling pigment up the mini to where light would be hitting in real life.
Just being careful as well that if your brush does start to fray, not to hit one of those other areas, especially with light colours. It is a pain in the ass to clean up. Sounds like the end of that playlist. Tells me. Click on over somewhere else. Okay. Let's go. Down here. Oh, what have we got? We have the one titled Resident Evil. <laughs> With that base layer on the arms, we can start working on the fingers and the face. I'm gonna take the face first. Probably got the widest area that I can work with. It's a bit too much still on that brush. Obviously, I'm going to leave that dark ring around the eye, but we're also going to leave some under the brow of the eye as well, and the bridge of the nose, just so... Sorry, the sides of the nose, not the bridge. We have that really deep, dark areas that will give us the definition. It almost acts as like an anti-highlight, and it means I don't have to go in with a wash and change any of those tones that I did before. There isn't all that much area to grab for Jill, which is quite nice. Her hair covers a lot of it. Again, just going to make sure that we're not overloaded on the brush for the skin. Again, less is more. Need to double up in areas, we'll double up in areas. Because of the pointing of the beretta forwards, it's really hard to get into one of the sides of the face there. But I think we've got it. Right. Our base skin. Well, I say base, it's one of our middle tones actually, because we use that brown to begin with. Is on for the arms and the face. Her eyes are starting to show a bit better there now. We'll bring that up as we move along. I'm going to try and get into the fingers now. And I want to leave 
obviously the bits between the fingers that we'd painted brown, we want to leave those brown. Tiny tip of that finger that comes through the trigger guard and one of the knuckles wrapped around. But because she's in a good firing position, she's actually not got all that much to paint on those. So. I will come in and tidy up those fingers afterwards with some more colours, but they are minuscule. Especially the tips of the thumb and the tip of the finger coming through the trigger guard. But she does have a very stable position. So a lot of those fingers, the bottom three of her right hand are completely covered. So it is literally just um, a knuckle of that third one, the tip of that one and the thumb around there. And then the other four on the other side. It's just really cool. I like that they thought about how she would hold a gun. I like that a lot. So I'm going to come in and just layer up some of that face because we can come in now it's dry and just get a little closer to those eyes so it doesn't look like she's got heavy bags. Adding a bit more shape to the face, really. There we go. Very strong colour around the side here, and that chin, and we'll layer up from there. So, from here. I think realistically we'd best work on either the shirt or there's a tiny little sprue mark there, that's annoying. Um, yeah, either the shirt or the straps. Let's do the shirt first. So we've got some of the Fenrisian grey, but I'm going to take some of that white. I'm just going to mix that in. I'm just going to lighten it up a little bit just to add some highlights. Because Jill's shirt is obviously... Really need to uh, highlight that grey. Uh, key piece. I really, to speed up my painting, I'm still on my Power Armor Brotherhood of Steel character. Take it where you can, do it where you can, and I don't know how often you actually paint Geeky, but like, I obviously paint quite regularly, so I, I'm getting to speed up a bit, and I'm focusing on one mini, and usually I'm trying to do several at a time. Speed comes in time, but speed isn't always worth it. Definitely lightening up this shirt at the top. Definitely want to pick out some of those highlights. Around the sides and the back. Did go a little over there. So while that's still wet, I'm going to try and tidy up that strap. There we go. However, I am going to have to reload Mid paint because there's just not enough pigment in that area. I hope to be we'll be able to tone match. 
pretty sure it's 50 50. Yeah. So let's go again. I'm going to dab this on the dry bit of tissue so that the water comes out, but not the pigment. Or less of the pigment, more of the water, even. that we should be able to start adding our layering up of light in those higher areas and any folds or any areas that we think will need them It's just this really awful bit just inside the arms, which is really hard to get to. And a really dark bit of blue from the pauldron in there that I want to tidy up. I'm hoping this will cover it enough. Right! While that's drying, I'm going to grab some orc grey. Mm -hmm. No, we're going to grab some orc grey. What we're going to do with that, the final highlights, just like we did on the other trousers for Chris and Barry, onto Jill's. I might add a tiny, tiny bit of this blue, just to give it that same tint as it had before. And we're still sitting within the same colour areas. So that's very, very blue. However, no, no, that could work quite well. Trust the process. I'm going to thin that down. Nice and thin. And then we are going to small amounts and just find those higher areas on top of the blue that we already did just to bring out those cartoon sort of highlights that we had on the other trousers. The other guys. I'm just hitting those areas that are a bit more pronounced. I hope that it will add some shade, some difference to what is already a really well sculpted mini, minus some of those moulding lines, but still. For us Resident Evil fans, it's definitely recognisable as Jill before you even uh, attempt to paint it. Hopefully, you should be able to see areas of light now on those trousers. Especially the upper thighs. That top highlight on what would be her right butt cheek. The bells of the trousers. I'm going to go up the back of that leg that's angled as well because that's in the light. It's giving us a top edge. And I'm just doing these tiny little dabs and then feathering them off afterwards just to thin them out at their edges, just to blend them back in to the blue that was there before and the grey. Go too far, little finger wipe, but that should be absolutely fine. A little bit there, just underneath the belt. A little one there. And across the back of the thigh. Just a 
just down the outside of that thigh as well. Okay. So. Now. Probably going to take that same grey blue combo. I realise there's a tiny little watermark on the hat there that I need to get rid of. And I'm going to highlight the beret and the pauldrons. Quite a thick amount on there, and I'm just going to try using some water to feather that down towards the base of the hat and hope that it looks like light's coming from one side. But I also want to leave the banding of the hat with the beret the darker blue so we have that separation. Hopefully this will show up on the camera. The beret, coming in with that stronger tone over there, and we're going to try and blend it down towards the back. I'm going to use my head torch to uh, show the fade, but... And the light will be coming over from this side here. So we want the tops of those pauldrons to be that same slightly more pigmented grey and blue. And then we can work our way around from there, really. shoulder there as well across the back where we can see that shoulder blade pronounces or protrudes even is more pronounced that's probably the right English there Just make sure we get this outer edge without touching the rim line of the hat, or of the beret. I'm tempted to paint that line in black. It could be quite striking, or in that necromancer cloak again. Could add a real different tone to it. Pulling that up from the edge just to give us that separation of light. And then we'll reattack the pauldrons. Now they've had time to dry. We're doing the same thing we did before for Chris and for Barry, where we are putting brighter colours toward the top and then feathering them down. This way we get that fade, that feathering effect that gives us that directional light, that there is a light source somewhere off to one side of the mini rather than just in from the top. There is parts of the pauldron that go forwards as well. I need to make sure I get those. So when we look at it from the front, which everyone's going to do straight away, we don't just have a glaringly big hole of base coat.
Um. It should be that bit done. Just want to get a little bit deeper in on that part of the pauldron that goes down into the clavicle. Just make sure that we get everywhere that's supposed to be got. Cool. So, I've returned like a rash. Hello, Dragon School. Welcome back to the show. What have you missed? Well, you say. So, we got the eyes all done up and directional. Come on, focus on Jaws' face, please. There we go. So we've got the eyes in there. We've managed to do a couple more layers on that shirt. We've worked on highlighting the trousers, especially on the upper thighs there, and on the bells and across the top of the calf muscle. We've managed to put in some direction on the beret for light. Whoop. So our light source is gonna be from this side of Jill. And yeah, I'm uh, pretty happy with the eyes so far. We've got the direction on there. We've got the lines underneath them. The right pupil actually looks like it's a bit further down or trailing further down than the left one. So let's see if I need to fix anything there. No, it looks good under scrutiny. We're okay. But yeah. It is coming along all right, actually. Come on, focus in again. We want Jill. Show them Jill. Dear Logitech, please make autofocus do what I want it to do in my mind. Yeah, so we've been working on some fades and on some Little bits of highlighting. We need to move into our next layers of skin and we need to do the hair. Uh, I will be trying to keep it brunette as much as I can. And with that, I will probably use something. Well, let's have a look at the tones. I mean, that picture is quite almost like fur brown from the army painter. So let's have a look at that paint. It's very much, I think that color there, or closest to. We need to work on the skin tones. We need to build up those cheekbones, the nose. We need to build up the arms. All doable, hopefully relatively soon, actually. I don't think we're going to be too far away from getting it all done. I need to work on the star's emblems, both on her beret and on her arm. So there's nothing like making it hard by having a tiny, tiny little emblem on, or cat badge on her uh, beret. So actually what I might do is paint that base of that black now. So that I definitively have something there to remind me to do it. Same thing, just tidy up any mistakes so I don't lose that fade that I had. That fur brown, it's almost kind of like the tanned flesh when you've watered it down. That might 
might be a bit too watered down now. Yeah, no, we're going to dry that up. I'm going to try again with a new bit that isn't as watery. Don't like that seeping in and leaving the lighter bits down in the recesses. So let's try again. Oh, I could use... No, we're going to stick to this. We've made a plan. Let's do this. Let me give this a proper shake. I need to get one of those Green Stuff World spinners. This is one of those paints that really does like to separate. For me anyway, I find. So, a tiny, tiny bit of water this time. There we go. It's probably about the right consistency. So we're not as thin as milk this time round. We are... Rice pudding juice. Let's go with that. <laughs> a thick, well, a thin cream or a thick milk. It's best I can probably describe that. And I'm just trying to paint those individual strands that are sticking up. There's a nice curl coming down the front from the fringe. Quite a few of these all over the uh, back as well, which is quite hard to get to. Rub that one with the side of the brush, which is good, rather than the tip. Having a slightly thickened paint here helps with that. Very, very tempted on the hair to possibly try a sepia wash, but I'm not sure. It's not my normal go-to. I certainly don't want to get that front strand with it. We'll see. Let's get a couple of highlights in on there, especially on the front where the bangs are. And then we'll, we'll decide from there. We'll let that dry off and we'll decide. So, we are going to grab some Necro... No, we're not going to grab Necromancer Cloak. We are going to grab some Mechanicus Grey or some Orc Grey and add some black to it. Because... I could even add it to that blue there, actually, because that's a bluish grey. We want to start doing those straps and giving them some raised areas and or a little help standing out. And by altering a black with some of the grey and some of the blue, we're using the same colour palettes that we had before, but without being the same base colour as the trousers. We want these, like Chris, to pop off the mini. Grab our artificer brush again and we're going to go around and chase the straps now. We really want to grab the top half of the straps more than anything. And then we'll do a final line on those with a, a slightly lighter grey when we get to it. No, 
there is a very, very wide belt around the back, which almost acts like a shelf. So we want to make sure we get that covered as well. Or else it's going to be a t-shirt line that's not going to look good. And we're just picking out areas of height with our very dark grey, which is almost unnoticeable on the black. But in a moment, when we add our next grey, it is going to show up. The tops of those boots, especially the tops of the toes. This boot that's here at the back can be done quite a bit because we've got a lot of exposed boots sticking up. And then we're going to grab our orc grey again. And we're going to lighten off. And lighten it up. So, let's put that one in there. Like so. Where are we at with the playlist? Okay, we still got time. We've got time. Don't have to worry about changing it just yet. I'm going to take that grey and black. And we're just going to lighten up this one over here. It's going to be a similar grey, but we're going to take some of that blue and add it in as well to the Necromancer cloak. But we still want that slight blue tint, which is Jill's whole colour aesthetic, is that blue. But these still need to be in the grey-black area as well. So that's too far. We've ended up with this quite murky blue here in the middle. I'm going to knock that back again with some black and some grey. It's too blue. In fact, actually, if I pull some of that into this one over here, that would be easier. There we go. We've got a slight tint, but without it being oppressively blue. Right, time for those top lines again. Especially top to pouches on the other side. Tips of those boots. Just there. Oh, there's one on the front that I missed. Just on that buckle there. Right, so now that that's done, let's have a look at the rest of the face, skin. And we'll move on from there. So we've done tan flesh. I'm now going to grab barbarian flesh. From the army painter. I'll water that one down a little bit. See if you're all that much. And once more, we're going to attack those highest areas. And then we'll be pulling pigment back up to the top. Hopefully, it should thin out the paint before it reaches the bottom of the arm, allowing us a nice little fade of skin tones between uh, darker shades and lighter shades, which will then give us some shadow and some shade and some direction of light.
we're coming in on the face again. Trying to grab anything like cheekbones, tops of cheeks, the chin, anywhere that light would catch with this first of the highlights. And then we're gonna lighten this tone up again and really pick out the top, top details on everything on that face. Especially on the side that we want the light coming from. triangle that goes up behind that flick of hair that's coming down from her beret. We want her left side of the face to be a little bit brighter than the right side because that's where again our light is coming from. She's also got her head slightly cocked to the right hand side which is why I've chosen to do the direction from the left. We need to thicken up those colors at the top. We can do on the arms. It's not a problem because we are going to be coming in with another tone on top of these ones to make her skin a little fairer. We're also going to go in and grab parts of those fingers again so that we have those same highlights going across all the small details as well as anything that we've done anywhere else. We have that consistency. Let's grab a tiny bit more. She's so gonna grab some of our original tone as well. There's a little bit underneath the arm I need to tidy up. With that tan flesh. So I can just help that blend as well by coming up with some of the original tone from underneath. I need to come in and find the highlights on the fingers. So this is gonna to be tops of knuckles, tops of fingers. And then I will lighten up one more tone with some white, which we already have some of over here. We'll take some of that and put it into this palette. Take some of our barbarian flesh. I'm just going to lighten that one up just like we did the other night. We did Chris and Barry, although I'm not going to use my artificial layer brush to uh, mix paint. That would be dumb. No, I've managed to get some blue and greys in there. That's not good. So I need to freshen up some of my water over here. So I usually use two pots, two ramekins for water. One is to wash, one is a pure tone, and I've managed to contaminate my pure water. The result being, when I've gone to go mix my tones and water them down, I've ended up with a tiny bit of the greyish blue pigment in there and we don't want that. So I'm going to grab this mug and hope it doesn't knock my camera over and get rid of some of my tone because I realise I don't have anything else to carry water in up here at the moment. And then we're going to just refill our two pots. I've got our paint washing pot and we've got a pure tone one just here. 
the, all that pigment that's in there is on the underside of the pot, so it's all good. Put that back over there, out of the way. So I don't make a massive mess. Let's wash off this brush to make sure that we've got no more pigment left on the brush as well. Right, let's put some water back into our barbarian flesh. We'll grab some of our white, drop that in there. Hopefully, in a second, we should have a nice top skin colour. There we go. Clean that one off. Come back in with the artificer, really. So, that's too much on there. We're going to get some of our dry tissue and just take some of the water out. And then I'm going to just paint on some of that pigment to the top areas of the arms first. So I can make sure I've got the right tonality. So this is an area I can easily replace if it goes wrong. Or fix if it goes wrong. And try and catch some of those muscles that aren't overly there, but where we would have like the crooks of elbows or anything like that in an attempt to give it some definition. Hopefully that highlight will make all the difference to certain bits and to certain aesthetics that people like. Tip of the nose. This side of the forehead. Then I need to make sure that my brush is not fraying. So we need to come in under the cheek and especially the eye is really hard to get the shape on because we have that hair just hugging the outside of the cheekbone where the light would be hitting from as well We've got very very tip of an ear showing there Feather some of that down. I'm going to also try just to get underneath the eye on the left, just to get the top of that cheekbone. Just across the top lip. I think. Minus her fingers. But realistically, we're just getting knuckles now. Yeah. Pretty happy with how that's gone. Feather off anything on the face that we might have overdone. Okay. Hopefully. So I'm there again. Right. See if we can get that to focus up as we move. Thank you very much, Absalom. What I need it to do though is focus on her face. You can, there we go. So we've got that nice lighter complexion to this side and to the tops of the arms. Like so, and then darker tones underneath. Thank you very much, Dragon Storm. Now we've got a badge on the arm and on the uh, the old lid to do. So let's get rid of that for now. And let's grab a fresh piece of 
a tissue. Thank you very much, Kiki. I will take all of the compliments. Of yum, 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 yum. Ooh. We need to. God, that's... those stars are so small. But I can't pick them up properly with my magnifying glass. But I know as soon as I take a picture of them when they're done, they are not going to be to scratch. So I'm going to grab the same very thin brush. Grab a tiny bit of our white. I'm just going to try and paint some white into those stars. So that I have a basis to work off the yellow. I am going quite heavy putting the white in there and then just finger rubbing it off. So that hopefully it only takes it off the highest points. That is very finite. The hat I do not think I'm going to get. Even with my max magnification, I am struggling to see that. This is where everybody else who paints is going to be like, no, no, they're really big and your eyesight's just getting really bad. Grab our yellow. We want iron and yellow, which is a contrast paint. And I don't need much. Just need enough to just change the color of that white inside those stars. We can implore the white technique as well for the arm. But for the one up here, I have to be super careful. Luckily, it's over black, so it's not too bad if I make a mistake. But contrast is so highly pigmented, it sometimes shows up and can change the color of things. So, the hat or beret now has some out of focus stars on it. There we go. Three stars up there. We've got the first three on the shoulder badge as well. Come on now, Jill. Play the game. That is still a bit untidy around there for me. So I'm going to grab some of our black once more. It's really separated, actually. So we're going to grab some more of that. Oh, actually, I could use that one there. That could be quite good. And then what we use for the trousers. just to darken up areas of that badge around those stars so they really pop out.
then we do have some buckles we can grab. I know they're black on Jill. I wonder if I have to get close on that picture. Okay. So there are a few extra details there that we can grab. Specifically. Oh, I need to tidy that up. So I've left an area around the back, actually, where I painted some of the strap and I got it wrong. I hadn't noticed. Clean that one off from Pure Tone. Tidy up that area underneath there. So that when we get to painting in those black lines that I love to do, it's at least relatively neat. And it's not going to look too thick. Hmm. So now the real question is, how do I grab those? There is at least a tiny bit of white Wind strong hair tonight. Uh, inside, there's like little, almost divots to the pauldrons on the pictures. I imagine the studs that hold it in place. I'm just going to paint those in white so they pop off on the back of Jill. on those blue leather pauldrons. There we go. And then I'm gonna try and find a different color for those buckles. Because there is a lot of the detail is in those. I don't wanna lose it. Certainly know that the straps of the trousers are gonna get a little bit of love on the belt loops. Just so we can add some breakage to those belts. Maybe if I go solid black for the buckle so they are even darker. Let's try that. Maybe we'll get some definition between canvas and we hope is an other material or plastic in this case. That could have been too thick. Definitely the right Resident Evil playlist for this. <laughs> Getting a little spooky up in here. Yeah, I'm going to leave it well alone there. I think we've gone far enough with those ones. I don't need to tidy it with gloves, I don't need to tidy it with gun. So, let's start doing our separation. I'm so tempted just to try a band of black around the beret. I 
maybe even this dark bluish grey, just to give it a real difference. Tidying up any mess that I made. Trying to fix that. So that we don't taint the hair with this dark and blue. But actually, I do like having that dark band between the two areas of the hat. striking band there so we've got that going around the base of the beret and then I'm gonna grab my black Templar and it's time to do my favorite bit I'm gonna paint in the details Sarah. Here we go! And put the palette off to one side, I don't need that anymore. Nice big shake. And then I'll probably knock it over in a second. So. Right. Let's do this. Let's fucking go, pal. Very fine brush again. I'm gonna keep my super mags on. Ever such a small amount. Use the wet just to knock it back. And I've got to work out where we're starting. Those arms are in a really good position for me to get to. Nice black ring between the arm. And the t-shirt. Just going to try to keep that thickness the same, or keep that line the same thickness the entire way around, while also not putting on way too much. So the insides of the arms are the hardest bit because that is where we're going to struggle to get that brush in. Make sure we don't have too much on there. And it's pulled down towards the tip. So I need to get underneath this shoulder and this arm and separate out those two areas of this shirt. Same again on the other side. We're trying to go between the poldons and the arms. So we've got that clear indication there's a change of material. I'm also gonna do it between the pauldron lines and the back armor. So we've got that height difference. 
And again, between the pauldron and the arm on the other one, which is actually quite an angle. I'm tempted to just paint that mold line so it looks like a folded shirt up because it's so deep. That's actually what I'm gonna do. So, let's grab these here. I'm gonna have to go underneath all of those straps and around every strap to separate them from that t-shirt. Oh, without touching the other bit of the t-shirt, you nana. So if we do that, we're just gonna take some wet tone, wet tone, some water, and just try and wash that bit out. Before it dries too much. And we're gonna carry on with the rest of the job. Keep it underneath that pauldron there. Join the shoulder blade lines to the back. And then we can keep coming around the back of these straps here. And because we added gray and blues to those straps, what we should see is a nice shadow now underneath them without having to it just thicken a black line, essentially. It's gonna add different tones. It should now look different to the rest of the mini. That was way too much on my brush. down the sides of the straps. alone we're going to start going down the legs so we've got a very nice line underneath and above that top belt we definitely want to separate those two areas hand leg we want to get underneath the thigh strap we want to get all around the bottom of the holster and then we want to repeat the process on any other straps really Got this one that runs across at a slant and follow that slant down to her pouches on the other side here under the belt under these pouches and again under the belt running across the front that might just do it I oh, know there's a bit there between the arm and the chest we want to add some shade and separation too 
can't risk getting into that clavicle because it's just too fine. You can do put a bit over the top of this strap to help add some shade. Just there. Make sure that the bit underneath it is even. And I think I'm going to leave it there. Oh no, there's a bit just behind the hair there. separate the collar and the hairline from anywhere else. That. So Dragon School, what are me and Richard painting on Thursday? We are on the boulette next on episode... Are we 19 now? 20 now? I'm unsure. <laughs> I will make a banner later or tomorrow and I will work out where we are. It's crazy to think that we're like at 19, 20 though, that it's been so long. But Jill has painted. What you can see, what I've done with the black lines. So I've separated that mold line on the shirt. We're painting the black rim around the arms and around the gloves, so we've got those defined separate areas. And again, between the pauldrons, between the shirt, underneath every strap. And what you end up with is almost like the cartoon lines painted back in. And I'm a fan of that, which is why I do it. But for a board game mini, I'm happy to say that that is tabletop ready. Oh yeah, I could do with tidying up that left pupil a little bit, but I'll do that off camera where I'm um, gonna be less picky. <laughs> but yeah, we've got that fade on the berry from light coming in from this side of Jill. Pretty happy with how that's gone. One Jill Valentine. I will get some pictures of her along with Chris and Barry up on Instagram, which means there's only one character left. I've saved my best till last, thanks to all of you guys. It's Rebecca Chambers. Whoop, whoop. I'm looking forward to painting her. Like I said, she is the best. If it's clerical medic, I like to play them. But yeah, I'm gonna get pictures of that one done. And we'll get this video transferred across to YouTube. Guys, thank you so much for hanging out while we paint up Jill. Thank you so much, Geeky. And yeah, we will um, try and get another stream done this week to finish at least those core four miniatures done. I probably won't paint every single zombie individually on stream, but we'll see. We'll see what happens. I certainly want to get Alpha and Bravo team done here on the stream because I think that'll be quite fun. Yeah, guys, thank you so much. Uh, I will probably be back potentially tomorrow during the day. I'm unsure yet. Uh, but if not, Thursday for Painting Up the Monster Manual with Richard is our next show. I hope you all have had a fantastic week and I hope you have a fantastic week. And may the dice gods be ever in your favour. See you around, guys.